Let's not use my video. Why is he not using my video? It's the reality of life. And so we cannot teach independence, right? And and say let's do that. Good morning, dear participants. Good morning, everyone that has joined us this morning. We want to welcome each and every one of us to today's webinar. Today's webinar is focusing on the challenges of utilizing withholding task credit notes. And we are looking at it from stakeholders perspectives. I want to welcome each and every one of us today and our panelists and our paper presenter, they are here and ready to dish out their wealth of knowledge for our benefit. We can see that there are still many of our participants and others that are still gaining access to the platform want to kindly permit a few or uh, five minutes uh, lag time to enable each and every one of us to settle down for this webinar. The program is going to kick off at five minutes past 10 on the dot. Thank you while we await for our members who will be able to start this program at five minutes past 10 a.m.
Good morning once again. Please, we are starting the program right now. This webinar is being organized by the Institute in order to address the challenges of utilizing withholding credit notes. The objective of this webinar is to give tax authorities an understanding of the challenges encountered by taxpayers in utilizing their withholding task credit notes. And also this webinar is going to give us an opportunity to get feedback on how possible resolution of this tailmaid can be made. Also, we are going to have suggestions on a peaceful resolution between the taxpayers and the tax authorities. This webinar is scheduled to last for three hours, and we are going to take a lead paper presentation. The lead paper will be presented by Mr. Ololua Oguni, a senior manager with EY. After his presentation, we are going to have a panel discussion where Mr. Gabriel Ogunjilisi, the Director of Oil and Gas Federal Inland Revenue Services, will discuss this lead paper and the theme of this uh, presentation from the administrator's and regulator's perspective. He will be discussing the regulator's perspective from the federal. We will also have after him, Mrs. Bolaji Akintola, the director, Tass Audit, Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, who will also discuss this lead, uh, the, the team of the webinar from the state perspective of regulators and administrators. We will have after her, after her, Otumba Ajibola Ogundipe, who is the managing partner of Oluto SA Professional Services Lagos, who will be discussing the team from taxpayers' perspective. So before we go into the lead paper, we are going to observe some formalities. Our formalities will start with the opening prayer and we are going to uh, all recite the national pledge in place of our opening prayer. And then following that, we will be able to receive the messages from the dean of the faculty of tax policy and administration of CITN, Mrs. Olubanke Akani, the tax policy and administration faculty is behind the organization of this webinar today. The coordinating dean, Dr. Mark Abani, is going to welcome us and stand in for the president in this webinar today. And after that, we will go straight to take the lead paper presentation from Mr. Ogni. Right now, please, can we stand by for the national anthem followed by the CITN anthem?
Hello. Hello, hello, Barry Cadalis. We can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, they wanted the national team, but uh, they are facing it. However, we are going to continue. Uh, we're going to continue. Can we please take as our opening prayer the national pledge? Let's take the first stanza of the national pledge as our opening prayer. Please, can we all recite the national pledge? I pledge to Nigeria my country to be faithful loyal and honest to serve Nigeria with all my strength to defend our unity and uphold our honor and glory so help me God amen thank you very much dear colleagues I want to invite the coordinate the dean of the faculty, uh, Mrs. in the person of Mrs. Olubanke Akoni, to please give us her welcome address in the next five minutes. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me? Very well, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, the president of Chartered Institute of Tradition of Nigeria, ably represented by the Coordinating Dean of Faculties, the Deputy Vice President of CITN, Barrister Sam Agbeluyi, other council members, the Coordinating Dean, Dr. Mark Abani, our lead paper presenter, Olalu Aguniyi, our discussants, Director Oil and Gas, Federal and Revenue Service, Director Tax Audit, Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, Otumba Ajibola Gudikwe, Faculty Members of Tax Policy and Administration, our moderator, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to this webinar hosted by Tax Policy and Administration Faculty of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. The Tax Policy and Administration Faculty has an objective. The objective is to fashion ways of improving Nigerian tax administration through setting the right balance between taxpayer service and tax enforcement. The faculty in achieving this does the following examining current and emerging issues in tax administration 
in order to advise CI10 Council, appraising challenges facing tax administration, and suggesting ways by which the Institute could help, and bridging the gap between tax administrators and taxpayers. This webinar is holding today in the light of improving tax administration in Nigeria by creating this atmosphere for taxpayers and tax authority and all stakeholders here present to deliberate on challenges associated with utilizing withholding tax credit notes. And I have no doubts that our seasoned discussants our prepper presenters and all our stakeholders here today will fully deliberate on the realities of these challenges and profile solutions and resolutions that will aid more efficient tax administration. In closing, I want to appreciate the CIT and Council for the opportunity given to the faculty to make this contribution today for more efficient tax administration. I'm grateful to all our participants here present and looking forward to their perspectives and contributions even to this discussion. Finally, I have the honor to call upon the CI10 president to declare this webinar open. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, my Dean. Thank you for the welcome address. Please, may we invite Dr. Mark Abani, the Coordinating Dean of Faculties of CITN, to give us a message on behalf of the President. Uh, good morning, professional colleagues. Uh, good morning, moderator. Uh, I wish to stand on existing protocols ably set out by Mrs. Akande, the Dean uh, of the Tax Policy and Administration Faculty. Uh, and so we recognize President Council members uh, and all of us present. The taxpayer's perspective is key in obtaining and getting a fully functional taxation system. Uh, it's with that in mind that this seminar has been called. Now, withholding tax is very important to government as it's a way of their guaranteeing to get in some of their money uh, that is due on lots of transactions. In fact, in some cases, withholding tax may be the only tax that is actually ever received from some non-compliant entities, persons, and, and, and individuals. So withholding tax is important to bring everybody into the net. But it's also important that those who do have withholding tax taken from their, their, their payments uh, are able to use the sum so uh, deducted in order to settle their tax bills as is intended under the law. Withholding tax is effectively an advance payment of tax due either for a corporate body or for an individual. They should be able to do this easily and fairly with a minimum amount of administrative uh, interventions. In fact, there is a thought process that says under uh, uh, um, the presidential um, uh, law, uh, not law, regulation 001, that uh, after 30 days, if the MDA has not supplied, for example, the uh, withholding tax to FIRS, that's not the taxpayer's problem. The taxpayer just needs to be able to say we have to suffer this. So there are a lot of administrative issues observed very much in the breach. Uh, so this is going to give us an idea of some of the issues, some of the perspectives that those who try to utilize their withholding tax uh, 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 credits are going through. Uh, it also, and it's very pleasing that we have both uh, FIRS uh, directors and LIRS directors on behalf of the State Boards of Internal Revenue present so that they can both explain some things, take note of other things, and understand the experiences that are being shared openly and frankly. I would say that um, Chatham House rules apply in the sense that 
there's we should be able to talk freely without uh, attribution or any particular uh, feeling that we will be gone after. And finally, I would like to think that if, as a result of our deliberations, we find that there's some lacuna in the law, we are able to articulate this position to the various federal boards that look after these sorts of issues, such as the fiscal uh, uh, reform uh, tax uh, committee, policy committee, so that laws may also be changed to make it easier for taxpayers and smoother for the operation by the regulators. With that, I say welcome everybody, keep your ears open, and I hope that we all walk away here very much more enlightened and with more information. Thank you very much. This is on my behalf, on behalf of the president of the CIT. Thank you. Thank you very much, the coordinating dean of faculties of CITN, Dr. Mark Abani, for that welcome charge. We will be inviting the lead paper presenter who is going to discuss or present the lead paper on the challenges of utilizing withholding credit notes for a more efficient task administration. Mr. Ololua Ogunui is a senior manager with EY Nigeria. But before he will take up his paper, we will want to encourage our members to kindly if you have a question, please use the chat box and drop your questions where the, facil the facilitator and the uh, panelists are going to attend to the questions. You may not be able to raise your hand until when we must have finished the discussion. That's when we will now open the floor for members who want to make contributions. But kindly let us have your questions and your answers. You can use the chat button and drop your questions and we will collate them and let the facilitators do justice to them. With that, I would like to invite the lead paper presenter, Mr. Ololua, he is going to give us his paper on the challenges of utilizing withholding credit news for a more efficient task administration. I will want to give us a little background to the profile of Mr. Ololua, who is a senior manager in the Global Compliance and Reporting Task Services team of EY Nigeria. Prior to joining EY Task Service Line, he was a financial reporting officer with one of the commercial banks in Nigeria. He has, he's a holder of a BSc degree, a bachelor degree in accounting. He is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, an associate member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, as well as an associate member of the Nigeria Institute of Management. Can we please welcome Mr. Ololua as he takes the lead paper in this webinar. Mr. Ololua, please over to you. Thanks very much, Mr. Fidelis. And uh, I'd like to appreciate, you know, this opportunity that has been accorded to me this morning to make this presentation. I also want to appreciate you know, the Institute for what they have been doing over time in sensitizing you know, the stakeholders, the tax authorities, the taxpayers, the consultants in addressing the challenges that has uh, you know, come upon our tax administration in Nigeria. Just like the coordinating director has set the ball rolling, we have quite a number of challenges you know, that we are faced with you know, in the administration of our tax, I mean, tax practice in Nigeria. And one of such is what we are discussing this morning, the utilization you know, of our credit. No. Mr. Cornito, can, can I present my paper, sir? Oh. Yes, sir, you can, you can slide your view. Your, you can present your slides now. You can share your slides as well. Okay, thank you very much.
So like, like I said, the, the focus this morning is to actually look at the challenges of utilizing withholding tax credit notes with the perspective you know, of, of profiling solutions to some of these challenges. We are not just here to look at the challenges alone. And I'm glad this morning that you know, the relevant stakeholders, I can see some top officials you know, from the Federal Land Revenue Service that has joined this, this present. So in the next couple of minutes, we are going to be looking at these challenges with a view to providing solutions. But like we all know that we cannot necessarily talk about withholding tax credit notes in isolation without looking at the concept of withholding tax. And to start with, it's imperative for us to look at the regulations or the relevant sections of the extant laws that's actually guiding the operation of withholding tax. We have section 78 to, to 85 of the company's income tax act. We have section 23 of the company income tax act where we have profits and entities that are exempted from, for, from tax purposes. We have section 69 to 72 of the personal income tax act. We have you no know, changes and modification as introduced by the Finance Act 2019 and 2020 as amended. We have the FRA circular, even though the circular, I must state at this point in time that the circular is actually not the law, where we have variance you know, with, with the extant law, the, the extant law we prevail, and the double taxation agreement. Having understood the, 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 the legal basis upon which you know, withholding tax is, is being administered in Nigeria and applicable, it's imperative also for us to understand what withholding tax is and what withholding tax is not. You know, withholding tax, you know, is not a separate form of tax, and it was introduced into our, in, into our landscape, tax landscape in Nigeria in 1977. And it was introduced mainly as a collection mechanism. And the whole essence of doing this, just like we know that the essence of taxation is to boost government revenue so that it can cater for one or two developmental needs in the nation. So withholding tax was introduced as a means of collection, as a collection machinery to curb tax evasion. It is, it is a well-known fact that a normal taxpayer, you know, under normal circumstances, may not want to declare what is actually due or what, what, you know, what is actually remittable to the government. So withholding tax is actually one of such mechanisms that the federal government and the state government, through our relevant laws, has actually put in place to curb the you know, tax evasions. And it must be stated that it's also not a separate tax on its own. You know, in 2011, we have the self-assessment regulation whereby taxpayers can actually self-assess themselves based on the transactions they have consummated. And withholding tax is one of such you know, mechanism to bring people that ordinarily wouldn't have been captured in the tax net, just like our doctor rightly mentioned during his speech, you know, the purpose of withholding tax is to bring prospective taxpayers into the tax net, thereby increasing the tax base you know, for the government. As we all know, withholding tax, again, is a prepayment of tax. Withholding tax is an advance payment of income tax deducted on qualifying transactions. So as we are going to be looking at in the next you know, slides and within the next few minutes that I have, we are going to be looking at some considerations. At what point in time should withholding tax be triggered? At what point in time should I, should the taxpayer be saying, I need to, to, to deduct withholding tax on, on transaction? Withholding tax, again, could also be the final tax on certain form of transactions, particularly when it has to do with passive incomes. We are going to be looking at that, you know, in the subsequent slide. Withholding tax, like I said, is a payment on accounts, a prepayment of accounts of, of, of tax on the ultimate income tax that a taxpayer will actually eventually you know, be assessed to. So having understood what withholding tax is, there is need for us to also understand what are the triggers? What are some of the considerations before we look at the challenges associated with withholding tax credits in Nigeria? It's imperative for us to know at what point in time should a taxpayer, should an entity you know say I want to deduct withholding tax on a, on a transaction. Like I said in the previous slide, withholding tax is actually chargeable on qualifying transaction. And one of you know, such critical consideration or one critical factor that must be considered is the determination of whether that entity or that income is chargeable to tax in Nigeria. 
withholding tax, like I said, you know, is, is a prepayment of tax. It's an advanced payment of income tax. So where an entity or an income is actually not subjected to tax in Nigeria, then withholding tax will not be triggered. And this takes us to point number one, looking at the type of income. Looking at the type of income, type of income can actually be broken down into two. We have the passive income, which, you know, in the layman's language is our unearned income, unhand income, income that is accruing from, from investment, either in shares or in properties or the use of rights and the likes. So we need to look at whether the income in question that we want to subject to withholding tax is actually a passive income or is an active income, is, is an income that is actually accruing from the daily operations you know, of, of an entity. Having understood this, it's also imperative for us to look at the type of vendor. Like I said, withholding tax being an advanced payment of income tax is chargeable on qualifying transactions and entities. Sections 23, we have quoted earlier on, actually listed certain you know, entities and certain profits as amended again by Finance Act 2019 and 2020, actually you know, gave us an highlight of some of this income and some of these entities that actually should not be, you know, be subjected to withholding tax. So there's need for us to bifurcate the type of vendor that is associated with a transaction. Is it a local vendor or is it a foreign vendor? If in the case of a local vendor, you know, we, we need to look at the type of transaction or the qualifying transactions as to whether such transactions or such entities will be applicable to you know, withholding tax. And if it's a foreign vendor, we also need to consider the country of residence, particularly for us to know whether there is a double taxation agreement with such you know, country or jurisdiction. And having looked at that, it's also need, I mean, there's also need for us to look at at what point will passive income be subjected to withholding tax. And I want to say that almost always, irrespective of the location of, you know, of, of the entity or the vendor, almost always withholding tax will be triggered on dividends and the type of passive income. We have dividends, we have the interest, we have royalties and, and rents and the likes, except where the entity involved has been specifically exempted. For instance, if they are under pioneer status, I know of certain entities in Nigeria that you know they are they are into real estate and they got pioneer certificate or pioneer exemption for their activity. So in such case, case, you know, we told in tax will not be triggered until after the expiration of that pioneer. And at what rate will we told in tax be chargeable on passive income? Is likely going to be 10%. For entities in non-DTT jurisdiction, including a local vendor, that is entities that you know are incorporated here in Nigeria. And in the case where we have you know DTT agreement with such a foreign vendor, the returning tax rate will be you know, reduced to 7.5%. And as you can see from the slides, these are some of the countries that Nigeria currently has DTT agreement with. We have Canada, we have UK, the Netherlands, France, Pakistan, Slovakia. Philippines, Czech Republic, South Africa, and China. So having looked at the, the passive income, at what point will, will a passive income be triggered for withholding tax purposes? There's also need for us to look at the active income. Again, for active income, withholding tax will be triggered, you know, virtually on all transactions, except where the income of such entities, you know, are specifically exempted within the provisions of the extant law. You recall that in 2019, when Finance Act was introduced, there was an exemption that was given to small companies. So, so small companies that earns, you know, turnover below 25 millions are not chargeable to, to, to tax. And as such, withholding tax should not be triggered on their transactions. Withholding tax should not be triggered on, on their transactions, except though, even though they have you know, the obligations to, to render their, their returns, but based on the, the Finance Act of 2019, withholding tax should not be triggered on, on, on their transactions. Likewise, on entities that are covered under Pioneer. And in a case where we have you know, transactions that also involve reimbursables, and such reimbursables have been clearly stated with supporting details you know, on, the, on the particular invoice, withholding tax should not be triggered. These are some of the you know, qualifying transactions 
on which withholding tax will be applicable and the applicable rate. We have construction, we have building. This was reduced again, sometimes, uh, sometimes in 2019-2018 to 2.5 from 5%. We have commission, management fees, legal fees, audit fees. You know, withholding tax is applicable if, if such entity were to be, you know, a company or a non-resident entity within a non-treaty country, withholding tax on them will be at 10%. While for individuals and enterprises, withholding tax on their transactions will be limited to 5%. Contracts of supply, contracts of service, other than, you know, contract in the ordinary course of business. And like we know that in, in, in last year, we had a case, you know, adjudicating this between FRS and Tetra Pak, saying that withholding tax should not be chargeable on, you know, sales or contracts made in the ordinary course of business. Having said this, you know, withholding tax for, for foreign vendors, for non-resident entities, withholding tax is going to be applicable where such foreign entities are deemed to have a permanent establishment or significant economic presence as introduced by the Finance Act of 2019. It is in such instance, don't forget I, I, I actually mentioned that withholding tax is triggered principally if an entity is subjected to tax here in Nigeria where an entity is actually not subjected to tax, withholding tax will not be triggered. But in case of non-resident you know, entities, non-resident companies, withholding tax will be triggered on their transactions as you know, outlined in section 13 of, of CETA, where they have fixed base or permanent establishment, that is they have existence of a physical presence here in Nigeria. And uh, they also you know, up have a significant economic presence based on virtual or digital transactions. And withholding tax on such transaction is going to be at 10%. 2020 Finance Act actually you know, reduced management fee, consulting fee, technical and professional service for, for non-resident companies that if they are carrying on you know, or, or they are engaging in management services, consulting, technical and professional services, withholding tax on their transactions is going to be the final tax. And that, you know, is going to be at 10%. Notwithstanding the nature of the transaction, withholding tax is going to be at 10%. Having understood this, we can now go into the discussion of the day, withholding tax credit notes. Like I said, we cannot, you know, all that I have said over time is to lay the foundation upon which withholding tax credit notes, you know, can actually come out to, 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 to the four play. Now, what is withholding tax credit notes? Withholding tax credit notes can be likened to a receipt. It is actually a proof of payment. So for instance, like a coordinating director actually gave, you know, a, you know, that explanation during the opening speech. There are qualifying transactions that two companies or two entities or two individuals are engaged with. And because of the obligations, you know, following the canon of economy of taxation, that you know the, the, the process of collecting taxes should not be administratively high. And knowing fully whether withholding tax, you know, is a collection mechanism, they are under obligation to actually deduct tax. Now, when they have deducted this tax and such money have been remitted to relevant tax authorities, the only proof by which the beneficiary can actually enjoy this is to have a withholding tax credit note. So withholding tax credit notes can actually be likened to a proof of payment. Withholding tax credit note can be likened to a receipt. And withholding tax credit note is, you no know, withholding tax withheld is expected to be remitted to the relevant tax authorities, be it the Federal Inland Revenue Service or the State Inland Revenue Service. If it is a, a, a deduction that is remittable to FIRS, such deductions and remittances should be made within 21 days following the month of transactions and in the currency in which the, 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 the transactions occur. And if it is due to state internal revenue service, it is actually remittable within 30 days, within 30 days to the relevant tax authority. A taxpayer from whom tax has been returned is actually expected to gain credit, to get this credit notes so that it can be used as an offset against future tax liability that such enterprise, such entity, such company or individual 
we actually have. So withholding tax credit note, as we have come to discuss this money, can be likened to a receipt. Having understood what withholding tax credit note is, it's also very important for us to look at the current process for utilizing withholding tax credit notes in Nigeria. The current process, what are some of the processes, what are some of the stages that you know, a taxpayer will need to go through before utilizing withholding tax credit note to offset the tax liability that such an entity may have. We have number one, withholding tax will be deducted from qualifying transactions. As I've explained in the previous slides, withholding tax is deducted at source and at the applicable rate, be it from a non-resident company or from a local vendor or from you know, arising from a passive income, withholding tax is deducted as such. And when such withholding tax is deducted, such withholding tax is expected to be remitted to the relevant tax authorities within the specified date, 21st day of every month following the month of transactions for transactions and remittances that are due to the Federal Inland Revenue Service and 30 days or 30th of every month following the month of transactions and in the currency of transactions to remittances due to the state internal revenue service. Such, you know, like I said, are, are, are to be filed or to be submitted to the relevant tax authorities. And the essence of this is by the time the deduction has been made, the taxpayer deducting such, you know, making such deduction needs to state the beneficiary. Like I said, withholding tax credit note is a proof of payment, is a receipt. The only way by which the other entity can, can guarantee and, and be satisfied that withholding tax deducted or may has been remitted is when such credit notes is uploaded or is, is, is being collected by such and so such returns or such submissions are expected to be made not later than 21st or 30th day, depending on the, the following, I mean the, the, the relevant tax authorities. And in submitting this. You know, it has to be submitted in a particular format. You need to state the TIN number of the, the TIN number or the PID of, of, of the entity involved, the amount, the contract amount, the rate of tax, and the amount withheld. So that when the relevant tax authorities are, are, are looking at their own system with a view to generating these credit notes, they know what exactly to do. So upon confirmation by relevant tax authority, withholding tax credit notes will be generated and uploaded on the entity's portal. I want to appreciate the relevant tax authority that in the last couple of years, a lot of investment has been made to automate this process, even though it comes with its teething problem, which has become a challenge to taxpayers, which is the basis for which we are here this morning. So upon confirmation by the relevant tax authority, withholding tax credit notes are generated and uploaded on the entity's portal using their TIN or their PID. Having done this, you know, once the upload is made, the entity, the company, the individual can actually log into their portal with the relevant tax authority to download and to print these respective withholding tax credit notes, which can then be used to reduce their income tax liabilities you know, in the subsequent period or as they are self-assessing themselves to tax here in Nigeria. Like we know that the, the, the regulation or the regime that we are currently at, I mean, following Nigeria is actually the self assessment re regime, whereby a taxpayer is actually meant to assess, you know, themselves to what is actually fair, what is actual, what they deem to be the, the, the right amount of tax, having considered a lot of factors. So this brings us now to what are some of the challenges? What are some of the challenges? The, the, the tax landscape, like I did mention, and the tax administration in Nigeria has a lot of you know, challenges. And I'm happy this morning that we are focusing on one of those challenges, which is the withholding tax utilization you know, by taxpayers. So we are going to be looking at some of the challenges that are currently being faced by taxpayers, you know, particularly as it's, it's tilting towards the Federal Inland Revenue Service. And uh, I recall that Prior to the current administration that we have you know, within the FRS now, there was an internal memo from FRS in July 2018 requesting that all taxpayers need to do a reconciliation you know, of their credit notes. And they specified you know, a timeline within which this must be made. So one of the challenges that we have seen over time is that due to different changes that we have had 
you know, in the relevant tax authorities to their portals and, you know, their automation process. We have seen that taxpayers, particularly from 2019, they are unable to download, you know, credit notes that they have, you know, suffered on their transactions prior to 2019 financial year. And the question is if, if a deduction has been made on me because of, you know, changing platform, changing portal, I cannot download it, meaning that such taxpayers can never be, you know, able to utilize such credit notes. So due to the recent upgrades that we have had, you know, within the relevant tax authorities, taxpayers are unable to generate and to download the credit notes they have, they have suffered, you know, in the, in the previous years. And I want to also appreciate that. Yes, while well, we appreciate the fact that a lot of investment are going into this automation, you know, into this upgrade, it's imperative for us to, 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 to also look at what exactly, you know, the taxpayer should, should, should not suffer. Taxpayer should not suffer as a result of this upgrade. So one of the challenges we have seen over time is that due to the recent up, upgrade, like we know that beginning from this month now, FRS had, they are migrating to tax pro and all filings, be it VAT, be it withholding tax, and even the corporation tax are expected to be filed online. Like I did mention, this you know, upgrade also comes with its own teaching challenges. It comes with, so it's, it's a major challenge, which I believe we are gonna be discussing today with a view to preferring solutions. Secondly, the loss of original credit notes. There are times that taxpayer, for one reason or the other, you know, may misplace or they couldn't trace their, their credit notes again. And upon approaching the, the, the relevant tax authorities, you know, the bureaucratic process of regenerating these credit notes is, is, actually, is actually out of this world. It's something that has affected taxpayers. Like we all know that last year during the NSAS protest, a lot of offices, a lot of companies, including that of, you know, some tax authorities were vandalized and vital information we are actually lost during the process. In the process of doing this, you know, you need to get, you need to do an affidavit, but approaching the relevant tax authority so that you can get this, this credit note that has been lost has been a major challenge. Another challenge that we have seen over time is actually with the, the timing for issuance of withholding tax credit notes, particularly those ones that are, you know, denominated in foreign currencies. The tax law, you know, in, in obeying the tax law that says taxes must be deducted and remitted in the currency of transactions. This, you know, this particular challenge tilts towards the FIRS. There, there are companies that have complied, you know, deducting withholding tax on either USA transactions, a GBP transactions, and so transactions are remittable to JP Morgan. The only person that has access to this account is the CBA. So over time, you know, up until now, not even over time, up until now, taxpayers are challenged getting, you know, this credit note for these deductions, credit note for these deductions. And as such, there is no way they can, you know, they can utilize these credit notes because they are not able to download it. Even as far as we speak, they are having challenges as to how these transactions can actually be tracked because it's not something within the, their purview. Thirdly, we also see that small companies, like I did mention that Finanza 2019 actually exempted small companies with turnover of less than 25 million. You know, but prior to now, prior to 2019, there are some of these small companies that have suffered you know, withholding tax on their transactions. They have suffered withholding tax on their transactions and applying for a refund is actually a tedious process, is a tedious process. And even when such you know, refund process is triggered by a tax audit and concluded relevant tax assessment paid by the taxpayer, such refunds are not even made within the specified 90 days as, as, as containing our tax law. So this is also a teething problem, which has, I mean, we taxpayers have come to, to, to face over time. There are times that we have also seen in practice that the relevant tax authority, they will discredit even the credit notes they have issued, credit notes they have issued from their office, maybe because of the fact that they couldn't keep records. They will tell taxpayers, we cannot trace this particular credit notes or our own record. 
But these are credit notes, you know, that have been issued over time by the relevant tax authority. So when there is no proper record, you know, from, from the relevant tax and I mean authorities end, it will be difficult, you know, for taxpayers to actually to actually claim such credit. We have also seen cases whereby FIRS or, or the relevant tax authorities will issue credit notes and written, and written is the name of the beneficiary, and upon presentation for utilization, so taxpayers are, are, are said, to, no, you cannot claim this because these are basically unwritten. And the process of, you know, having to get a benefit, having to write to the headquarters in Abuja and to other, other state of, I mean, internal revenue offices to utilize this, it has also proved to be a problem. We have also seen cases whereby FIRS in particular, they have refused to grant credits due to the difference in the year of assessment and the year stated on the, on, on the credit notes. This has been, you know, an age long challenge that taxpayers, you know, over the period they have come to face. And on the, tax, on the part of the taxpayer, we have also seen cases whereby taxpayers engage, you know, in, in transactions with entities that are not registered for tax purpose. And because you have the obligation to the door tax on, on, on qualifying transactions, there are instances where we have seen that certain taxpayers have refused to remit withholding tax deducted on their customers. For one reason or the other, it could be as a result of the fact that they don't have you know, a, a, a tangible thing upon which such, such deductions can be made. So we have seen that it's also a child, not just on the part of the taxpayer, I mean, on the part of the tax authorities, we also have this emanating from the taxpayers. And lastly, on the challenges is the inability to use withholding tax credit notes to, 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 to offset back taxes. For instance, using the, the, the withholding tax credit notes, that's, that's a type of error, using the withholding tax credit notes of 2014, for instance, to, to offset the, the, the tax liability of 2016 year of assessment. We have seen cases whereby relevant tax authorities will tell you it is only you know, credit notes that relates to this particular year that can actually be used to, to, to offset your tax liability. This is a, is a major challenge. And I'm hopeful that the relevant stakeholders here today from the state internal revenue of I mean, authorities from the federal inland revenue authorities will be able to you know look at this with a view to providing solutions before i conclude this this paper presentation it's imperative for us to not just look at the challenges but what effort must be put in place to ensure that we have an efficient and transparent system which is what this this webinar is actually out to achieve what are some of the things that the relevant tax authorities must, must, must do in order to overcome some of these challenges. Number one, as I've stated, and I want to believe the, the stakeholders will also tell us what is on ground now to, to, to overcome this, this challenge. Number one is the issuance of withholding tax credit notes in a timely manner. Withholding tax credit notes must be issued in a timely manner, particularly the ones that are foreign currency denominated. It must be issued in a timely manner. If, we, if taxpayers must get value for the deductions that has been made on their, on their transactions, such credit notes must be deducted, I mean, must be issued and uploaded to the taxpayers' portal as a Wendy. Number two thing is we must strengthen the online platform such that both the taxpayer and the beneficiary can receive a loss as at when that withholding tax is made and credited to their account. Just like you know, any, every other banking transactions, transactions between two entities, as one entity is making a transfer, it's been there, either been debited or credited. So we must ensure that our platform, as we are investing in automation, we must ensure that such platforms and such beneficiaries receive alerts you know, for, for the deductions that have been made on them. Number three thing is the reform mechanism that, that's in place now should actually be streamlined. It should not be too, too rigorous for taxpayers to get a refund of whatever deductions that they have been made on them, of whatever credit notes that they are submitting to the relevant tax authority. Also, the time lag between the, I mean, between when the request for upload is made 
And when credit notes are eventually you know, issued, this timeline needs to be reduced. It needs to be reduced. Taxpayers, you know, like every other business operations, they are, they are planning. And one of such planning is liquidity planning. If I have suffered with holding tax credit notes, but for one reason or the other, because of, of, of the delay from the part of the relevant tax authorities in issuing me these credit notes, I should not use my, my cash to settle some of these, these except where it is practically impossible for me to do so. If I have suffered with holding tax credit notes, it's also imperative that relevant tax authorities must work on issuance of these credit notes in a timely manner. And lastly, lastly, as we look at the possible resolutions, you know, against the backdrop drop of requesting for hard copy of credit notes, relevant tax authorities should check its database to ascertain that the status of, of, of the relevant credit notes, the issue of, pre, I mean, making a physical presentation, you know, we should actually be moving away from, from, from there. And I want to appreciate again that we are making a lot of the federal government, the state, I mean, government, they are investing into this. So we must get to a point in time that, you know, hard copy submissions of credit notes should actually be done away with. Reconciliation of, you know, a, a taxpayer's credit, I mean, K card with the relevant tax authority should be automated. And this should be an evolving document. It should be an evolving thing. It should be a continuous improvement on that thing. So that's, that's, that's basically the challenges and the, 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 the solutions. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Mr. Fidelis. Thank you very much, Mr. Oguni. Yes, I can get you. Thank you. We appreciate your presentation. Dear participants, the lead paper has taken us through the origin of withholding tasks, the uh, areas businesses that are chargeable, and then identify the challenges that associate the use of withholding tasks in Nigeria, and also profile some way forward. And we are going to, we've been receiving some questions on the chat box. Please keep your questions coming. We are going to attend to the questions in due time. Before we take on the questions, we would like to call in the panelists. The lead paper has espoused the team of this webinar. We also want to also take these challenges from the respective perspectives. The perspective of the regulators at the federal and the perspective of the regulators at the state and from the taxpayer's perspective. So on this, I would like to call on Mr. Gabriel Ogunjimlisi, the Director, Oil and Gas, Federal Inland Revenue Services. He is going to discuss this theme from the federal perspective. That is the administrators and regulators perspective from the federal regulator, FIRS perspective. He's going to also share his thoughts on how this challenge can be resolved. May I invite Mr. Gabriel to take the floor for another 10 minutes. Hello, Mr. Gabriel, you can unmute and you have the floor, sir. And while we await his presence, we will also have Mrs. We'll also have uh, Mrs. Bolaji Akintola who is the director, task audit of the Lagos State Internal Revenue Services, Service. She will also discuss this team 
the challenges of utilizing withholding credit, withholding tax credit notes from the state regulator's perspective. Mrs. Bolaji, I would like to invite and you. I stand. Thank you very much, Ma. I'd like to invite you to take up and share your thoughts and let's have your thoughts now for 10 minutes, Ma. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I stand on all existing protocols. So I want to the organizers of this workshop for giving me the opportunity to speak at this occasion on the topic, the challenges of utilization of withholding tax credit notes, stakeholders' perspective for effective tax administration. I will be speaking from the state's internal revenue services point of view. Um, I will do this using a short um, scenario, just a short story, just to make it easier for us. So um, let's say Mr. Chuka did a contract with XYZ Limited in the year 2020, and um, some amount was withheld by XYZ Limited. Mr. Chuka is filing his return on the last day um, in March 2021, and we would like to utilize his withholding tax credit note but he does not know how to go about it. So he approaches the state internal revenue service. Then we go through the process with Mr. Chuka to make it easy for him to obtain his credit notes so he can use it to offset his liabilities. So how does he get this um, credit note? So the withholding tax withheld by Mr. Chuka by XYZ Limited normally will be paid as a lump sum. That is it to be paid by all the, by, the payments will be for all the withholding taxes withheld by XYZ Limited for that month or for that period. So the bank will issue XYZ Limited a remittance receipt for the lump sum paid. XYZ Limited will now submit a copy of that receipt plus the schedule in a prescribed format containing taxpayer IDs of beneficiaries and other um, important information. Tax authority will verify the schedule and make sure it tallies with the amount remitted and then issue withholding tax credit notes for all beneficiaries with valid payer ID to XYZ Limited. Basically, um, the withholding tax notes will be sent, it, it is processed automatically once we get the schedule and the receipt of payment. Then Mr. Chuka will then go to the, to the remitter, to XYZ Limited to collect his credit notes. So XYZ Limited explained to Mr. Chuka that he failed to fill in his payer ID and that was why his credit notes were not issued. XYZ Limited sent in Mr. Chuka's payer ID to the tax authority and the withholding cre tax credit note was issued and sent back to XYZ Limited. Mr. Chuka collected his withholding tax credit note and presented same to offset his tax liability. Basically, um, one of the major challenges of um, of the one of the major challenges that we have as um, a state is the fact that the schedules are not properly filled they are not properly completed so the schedules are not properly completed and because of this when the remitter which is our agent the company that we tell when they remit to us without the details without taxpayer IDs, without names, without proper details of the beneficiary, then we are unable to process the, the tax um, credit notes. So it's one of the major challenges that we have as um, a tax authority. 
So non-availability of tax ID of the beneficiaries on the submitted schedules by the remitter is a major one for states. Payment to wrong tax authority is another one. That is payment that is due to states wrongly paid to FIRS, then the state internal revenue agency will not be able to process and issue the withholding tax credit note to the beneficiary. For instance, if withholding tax on director's fees is mistakenly remitted to FIRS instead of state board of internal revenue, such directors will not be, they will not be able to utilize the withholding credit notes because the states will not be able to process because they did not remit, um, they did not pay to, to the state's account. So this can also maybe um, cause a little bit of delay. So withholding tax deducted and not remitted, obviously we will not be able to process because even though the, it was withheld from the beneficiary, it was never remitted to the tax authority to process. So whenever the tax, um, the beneficiaries approach us, we always try to enlighten them on this process. Once the remitter is um, properly complete the, the schedule and also attach receipts of payments, then it becomes easy and it is automatic. So once we get the schedule and payment, we process all the withholding tax credit note for all the beneficiaries on that schedule and we send it back to the remitter. So obviously through um, ABC, because for legal states, we work through ABC to generate the receipts. But this process is supposed to be automatic. We only have issues when the schedules are not completed or when receipts are forwarded, even without any schedule at all. And then we have to chase up the remitter to give us breakdown, to give us taxpayer IDs for the beneficiaries and, and all this. So basically um, obtaining withholding tax credit notes should not be, it should not be difficult. Utilizing it now is another thing. So obviously, um, once you have the credit note with you, when you are filing or when you come in to do your direct assessment, then you can utilize it. So that is where we are. Um, so the, the, to overcome these challenges, so we've done all the, the to overcome these challenges, that we have in the state at the moment, um, we are automation like the, the first speaker, the first paper deliverer said, automation is the main thing that we are investing in. We are investing in a lot of automation through the ATAX platform. Um, we have started implementing. We hope that our implementation has not caused any discomfort to taxpayers because we know sometimes sitting problems of new platforms. But with more automation, these things will now become um, easier. And um, so we're hoping automation will help. We are hoping that the agents will also comply more by remitting what they have deducted, by at the point of um, invoicing, they should ask for taxpayer IDs. And if they have, um, and beneficiaries that do not have taxpayer IDs, which means that most likely they are not on the tax net. They should be advised to approach the tax authority, register to be on the, on the net, and um, register to be on the tax um, platform and get a payer ID. Because basically the payer ID is what we need to post the to post the um, withholding, to process the withholding tax note. So in view of these challenges, the following measures can help as well as um, automation. We need to do a lot of enlightenment. We are doing a lot on the social media platforms, on the radio. We need to enlighten the beneficiaries, like the first speaker also made mention, to 
process this payment to follow up with the um, remitters, with the people that deducted from them, so that it is not when they need it that they are now, you know, they are short of time to follow up on the processes. So they should, if somebody has withheld your um, payments from you, you should follow up, ensure it is remitted, ensure you collect your credit, um, credit uh, notes. So I know it is not all so plain sailing for now, but automation like this, like I said, and because the tax agencies are working very hard, at least at the state level, to make this system, you know, very stress-free. Um, we may not be there 100%, but we will also, through mediums like this, through platforms like this, through workshops like this, um, the feedback that we get will also help us to further improve the process. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. <laughs> for the presentation. We are going to call on Mr. Gabriel to also share his thoughts on managing this challenge from the Federal Inland Revenue perspective. Mr. Gabriel, you have the floor for 10 minutes. I want to invite Mr. Gabriel Ogunje Milisu from Federal Inland Revenue to share his thoughts on the challenges of utilizing withholding tax credit notes from the regulator's perspective coming from Federal Inland Revenue Services Service. Okay, before Mr. Gabriel come on board, uh, we've been receiving uh, questions. And we'll be attempting some of those questions. Uh, he will join us now. Okay. Let me bring on board Mr. Gabriel to share his Okay, so Mr. Gabriel, you can try and unmute yourself now. Hello, Mr. Gabriel, can you unmute yourself?
My ICT team has assisted me to unmute you. They are not okay. Okay, nice thank you. Now. Very good. Then we can hear you now. So sorry for that delay, sir. We're sorry about thank that. You. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I appreciate the organizer of this program for giving uh, FRS opportunity to be represented here and to make our little contributions. Um, good morning, everybody. Our protocol duly observed. The paper presenter has made a very good presentation, very robust, and I, I give credit for the well research paper and well presented. And I just wanted to say that uh, apart from all that you have said, Victoria Task also is a form of uh, collection mechanism, so which allows government to have funds evenly spread throughout the year for the funding of the budget, in spite of something that is uh, very important. And without taking too much of our time, I wanted to say that the drafters of the law had, as we say, some kind of challenge uh, in the use of withholding tax credit notes, either by the company not remitting when they withhold or, or remittance and uh, credit notes not issued. And that is why in the CETA, section 101 verse, um, um, subsection 7, it allows, it stated that FRS will not deny a taxpayer who has suffered credit notes, I will have suffered some deduction with that credit note if we can prove that they have suffered it. But there is a proviso there, provided that the assessment to which the task relate fall within the period covered by the task clearance certificate. So the provision of the law has given some kind of um, uh, cover to taxpayer not to be denied tax, uh, TCC when they have suffered some deduction and they have not, maybe they have not received the credit note or the, um, or the, 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 the agent of collection has not even remitted. And it also gives some kind of punishment to sort a taxpayer who withheld taxes from uh, agent or the, the vendors and do not remit. Say we cannot, we should not give them TCC for the reason of that uh, activity. So having said that, I want to say that FRS has gone, has done, I mean, we are still, we have been doing a lot in the past. I could remember uh, when we were issuing credit note manually in the years past, and it takes some years, at times two, three years to even write credit notes. We have moved from there, we moved to web portal where taxpayer takes the um, schedule to the bank and upload. And we also generate through that one. Um, that we, we ran for some time before 2016 thereabouts. And 2016, we tried to introduce another one, which uh, was actually outsourced. That one, we ran it up to last year, uh, 20, 2019, 2020, 2020, around uh, that kind of March. And unfortunately, that one crashed. So we had to start all over again with uh, another system, which we are now doing. This one, we're having uh, the task pro mass is, um, homegrown is developed internally, managed by FRS itself. And with this, some of the offices that have, that where it has been deployed, they have been getting their uh, credit notes on Naira transactions in the mailbox of the taxpayers and they are downloading. And they, know, they don't need to bring them to FRS before they can utilize it because the, uh, the transactions are automatically credited to the ledgers of the taxpayers. And that is where we are going anyway. Uh, we see how we use with the, um, uh, dollar uh, foreign currency transactions as well highlighted by the paper presenter. But we are working on that. And uh, with that, uh, with, before long, we are going to resolve it. You could remember that around 2015, uh, before 20, prior to 2017, we were having credit uh, notes in foreign currencies through a uh, flow line print, printers. We upload it at our hand here and we get the print something that is not created automatically. Taxpayers will still need to come and present the original to us before we grant the credit. Um, that will not be, will no longer be necessary. Anytime we are done with that, which is very, we are working on it. We are, it's only the payment gateway that is giving us challenge on that. Uh, I think about two weeks ago, we had um, interaction with some of the taxpayers in the oil and gas. Uh, when we tried to introduce, we did a demonstration of uh, task pro mass with them. And some things, questions came up which related to this, what, what we are discussing today. Um, FRS had come up with some kind of a stopguard arrangement for taxpayers that do not have 
credit notes or the one they could not download as a result of the um, of the of the collapse of the in uh, early app system we were we were using because that one was outsourced and we came out to say that all task here that are having credit notes um, uh, transaction that we are they have suffered source deductions and they've not collected they have not gotten the credit note or they are unable to download they should apply they should apply to FRS by making all the information available we will regenerate uh, the credit note and it will be delivered to their mail mail, 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 mail mail addresses. We have been doing a lot and some of them have been coming up. We have a dedicated office in Abuja dedicated specifically for this assignment and they are really working day and night to ensure that we are able to cover the backlog. Yes, some taskers are saying that it is very difficult for them to get to lay their hands on some of the transactions that have happened maybe years back. Um, that, that's very unfortunate, but there's nothing we, at that point, because this is an issue of cash. We need to be sure that the thing actually happened before we could we can uh, generate it. So we will still employ the taskpayers to ensure to try as much as they could to lay to, to account to lay their hands on those documents and file with FRS. We will generate what we just need to do. We really confirm that the taskpayers have not utilized that credit before in their K card, and we are doing that manually. The task controller will confirm, and the directors uh, will also confirm, and before it is sent to uh, for processing Abuja. So that we are doing. As soon as we get the promas um, on, which is already, I think by the end of this month or so, we said that we are no longer to, we are, we are migrating in most of the offices now to pro, task pro max. And that one for that Nara, Nara collections, going forward is going to be almost seamless and there's not going to be delay in the issuance of the credit note for the Naira. The dollars we are still putting us together, we are seeing how we can do it. We are, not, we are, we, we are working on it, as I met with, um, I think I engaged the people in charge of it last, last two weeks also, and they promised that we are going to, we are making progress. So that we, we are going to do, we are very sorry for that area of the dollar, dollar foreign currency transaction. But for the one that happened in the past, where we have the payment already in the, in the JP Morgan Chase, we can process the credit notes. So that one, if you have the backlog, even the current one, just let us have them, we will process and we will deliver to your, uh, to your um to your email addresses you download from that end and the thing is automatically credited into your into your account so that's what i need i can say concerning that now um they suggest the solution suggested are good um and we are almost doing almost all of them uh, um the time lag yeah. sorry that's a moment So we 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 will get back. We are, we are we, the time lag will be removed completely when we are when we are fully transited into task pro max. Um, checking of our database, there will not be any for it. The thing will be automatically transmitted and credited to your account. So those things are, are really going to happen, and some are already happening now for narrow transactions. I can say that with all. Uh, um, I think uh, we're doing uh, apart from that. I just want to uh, employ the taskpayers that um, they should just be here with us for this period. And those ones that are having their credit notes not yet pre uh, prepared for the backlog, I think from June last year. I mean, prior to June last year, from June last year, we don't have problem for NARA transactions. But prior to June last year, for NARA transactions that are not collected, right? Let us have the details and with uh, proof of your that you have suffered the deduction. We will confirm and we will use the credit notes. For, do, for dollar transaction, let us have the details also. We process for the back for the back years and the one that even up to date because we are the moment the money appears in the JP Morgan Chase, we will process. But if it has we are not remitted, there's no way we will process. But we have the law that's given us the route that can make the, the agent of collection to remit the money because the person that has suffered such deduction should not suffer for the inefficiencies of the agent of collection. We are aware of that. And we are making, we are putting things in place to ensure that they are not. So, they are not made to suffer for it by not denying them their TCC, which the tax, which the tax law has given us the power to do. But we cannot credit the account for an amount we have not received either. That's, I think we need to be clear about that. So that's what I need to say for now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your thoughts on this. And uh, with what you have shared with us, I think there will be a light at the end of the tunnel when the pro mass comes on board. 
We thank you also for having time. We've been receiving some questions which you are going to, uh, a lot of our participants are worried on the level of um, withholding tax credits that are standing to their credit, but they cannot utilize them. Or uh, after the third uh, panelist, please, uh, you will help us to shed light to some of these questions. So before you do that, I would like to call upon uh, the sub-dean of the faculty, Otumba Ajibola Ogundipe, who is going to share his thoughts on the theme of this presentation coming from taxpayers' perspective. We've heard the perspective of the regulators, which is centered on their efforts to make uh, resolve any issue and make the utilization of withholding tax credits easy for taxpayers. From the taxpayers' perspective, can we get a feel if this is if this has been if our taxpayers are able to take advantage of these facilities and processes that have been put in place by the regulators? Please, Otumba, you can unmute yourself. And you will have 10 minutes to share your thoughts, sir. You can have the floor now, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm a director. Mm -hmm. And then all the participants. And I want to thank the lead uh, paper presenter and also the representative of Federal Inland Revenue Service and then the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. Well, I'm standing on the existing protocols. As you can see, the key issue that we have here is on the challenges of utilizing the utility tax credit notes. <clears throat> and the people have, have, have assumed the following, that the taxpayers has actually suffered the deduction and that the, such taxpayers are actually residents in Nigeria, that such taxpayers can utilize the withholding tax. That the utilization of this advanced payment of taxes is in Nigeria and all, almost all the taxpayers are actually residents in Nigeria. That's the underlying assumption. May I also want to say one thing that the withholding tax, when it was introduced into the Nigerian tax system, was not for the purpose of collection per se but it was to bring into the tax net those taxpayers who are not within the tax net, who are not registered with either the federal or the state for the purpose of bringing all those who are undercutting taxes into the tax net. When such taxes are deducted as source from income earned by corporate, or non corporate individuals, and it is remitted to the relevant tax authority. The tax authority is used a document of acknowledging the tax paid in advance. Such document is what we refer to as withholding tax credit note. Withholding tax credit note is not a receipt. And uh, I want to uh, defer from the uh, <clears throat> statement made by the lead presenter that the credit note is a receipt. No, it's not, it's, it's a near money. Taxpayers see the withholding tax credit note as money that can be used to either offset the current tax liability or the back year tax liability. As far as they are concerned, they have this notion that if this deduction were not made at source, whatever inflow that comes to them uh, can be used for any years of assessment. Now, let's look at the issuance of the withholding tax credit note. FRS has over the years released various information supply on the process of payment 
of withholding tax. Issuance of credit notes and usage of credit notes to offset tax liability. In practice, both the federal and state tax authorities have not done enough as it relates to the crediting the value of the credit notes in favor of the beneficiary. Taxpayers are actually not happy with all the tax authorities in this country in relation to this because they felt that they are being unfairly treated in granting the required credit. And the taxpayers has over the years incurred additional expenses to go through rigorous steps before benefits can be granted. Before the, the step taken by FRS some years back to make the, uh, the printing of the credit notes online, I know a lot of taxpayers have to engage consultants to pursue, to retrieve withholding tax credit notes that have been deducted from income due to them. And the thing is that <laughs> the, 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 there is nowhere in the tax law which actually enforces the agents of the states or the federal to make sure that such withholding tax credit notes are actually delivered to the beneficiary. Areas of concern to taxpayer with the operation of the administration of withholding taxes in Nigeria. The current bureaucratic process of claiming tax credit with FRS. A taxpayer has suffered deduction as source is expected to be issued withholding tax credit certificate from the tax authority, which is the principal. This is a great, this is a great improvement as against the old practice where the beneficiary will be at the mercy of the agent that deducted the taxes, particularly when it's uh, the tax to do with issue that before you get this benefit, you must produce a hard copy of the credit notes. And these are the taxpayers' challenges. The taxpayer from the whom the taxes was deducted is asked to present a copy of the credit notes and a schedule in a format prescribed by FRS before such taxpayer can be granted credit of the amount deducted. And these are the taxpayers' expectation. The taxpayer expects a direct credit of the amount so paid in advance to the credit of their tax account, which are in the custody of the FRS. It is also expected that FRS you have moved their mode of record keeping away from the present position of using K cards manually in this 21st century. And a lot of them have issues with that. Because most of the time, when FRS moves, moves its office from one location to, to another, we discover that most of the pages of the K cards got missing. And of course, the taxpayers are now put in a serious position to represent and to prove that some of these K cards have actually been credited to them or not. And those are the things that we expect the FRS in particular to look at. Then we look at other areas, areas where the taxpayers have challenges is the inability of FRS to issue taxpayers a statement that the returning tax credit notes have been granted and issue a statement of tax position. I can't realize, I can't recollect when last each time taxpayers apply to FRS to give them a tax position. What is our position as of today? What are we owing? And what do we have in our credit? FRS, most of the time, we refuse to issue such statement. And what are the expectations of the taxpayer? The uh, expectation of the taxpayer is that the tax offices should be able to confirm payment on behalf of the taxpayer and the credit and credit the taxpayer's account, that is the K card accordingly, instead of emphasizing on the hard copy credit notes. After all, the credit notes are issued based on confirmation of payments to the FRS quota. And it's, 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 it's actually very funny that FRS will still be waiting for taxpayer to present hard copy of what they have on their system, which they can readily assess and credit it to the account of the taxpayers. 
when the one of the presenter in person of Mr. Obidja Musi stated something that, um, well, in practice, they don't actually carry it out. That once payments has actually been confirmed, they might not likely deny an applicant, a taxpayer who requested for tax credit certificates. Most of the offices will deny and we said, look, we need this hard copy for us to be able to grant you the credit, which is not too good. And then we expect that FRS should stand by whatever they say. And maybe because the information doesn't seem to be going around all the FRS's offices nationwide. A particular office will grant your request of similar thing. Another office will deny you totally. And what does the taxpayer benefit? They are losing most of the time because the tax credit certificates are actually used to make bids in their businesses. And of course, when they lose some bids and they are unable just because of FRS reviews to grant their request, they don't feel happy paying tax. One, there's another thing the FRS needs to do. The insistence that, oh, I've done that. The taxpayers' challenges. There's another challenge that the taxpayers are facing. Where taxpayers will find it impossible to either print their credit note or retrieve such from the customer that made the deduction. The revenue deny us the benefit of utilizing the credit notes that are shown on their web, web portal as received from such taxpayer and have duly acknowledged the payment. We are not of withholding tax credit notes are unutilized over time. Why they were shown on the account as assets receivables. They get classified by the external auditors as non-receivable and will be deemed impaired by the inability of the tax office to, to, to utilize them to the benefit of the taxpayer. It's a great challenge that a lot of big organizations, particularly those uh, organizations who whom's turnover are in billions, they have a lot of credit notes that FRS for two, three years have not been able to grant to them to use to offset their tax liability. And of course, when they keep on keeping such credits in their books as receivable, near money is an asset to be used to offset their tax liability. And of course, their auditors haven't seen that those things year by year that they have not been able to use them. We say, look, this asset, we have the opinion that they are unreceivable. So it has to be impaired. And of course, the, F, the same FRS will go against the impairment provision in most of these accounts as it relates to withholding tax. And this is a tax cost. Such impairment will not be allowed as tax deductible by the tax authority. This leaves the taxpayer in a double jeopardy, inability to enjoy a tax credit and inability to get tax deduction for tax returns as source when these are impaired. This taxpayer then file his tax returns and has to settle their liability in paying cash and something that can be avoided. The taxpayer's expectation is all we told the tax credit you know, in the name of the taxpayer who are the beneficiary should be credited directly without recourse to the hard copy of the credit notes. Usually, an advance payment of tax provide information that an income source has been identified through a third party. Such information being provided by taxpayers should be readily available for use in assessing a potential taxpayer who are not in the tax net. Field officers should also be ready to follow up on such information. Instead, the tax authority are concerned with the already, already registered and complying entity over taxing them. You have various audits that are carried out to belabor most of these complying uh, taxpayers. You, you have the 
the regular uh, tax audit, you have this audit, you have this investigation on our uh, recently. They come up with an issue that is you know, even in the tax law. They say revalidation that some of the taxes, taxpayers that have enjoyed the tax refund, they want to revalidate to such. Knowing fully well that most of the officers that carry out such tax audits are still within the revenue. It's a, another thing will be raised to revalidate what has been done. I don't know where we are going with the tax authorities. The taxpayers' expectation, the revenue should be traced. The, the, the revenue, it is expected to trace the non-registered company through their contact address to ensure that they are registered with either the state or the FRA, instead of expect, uh, exacting the effort on the already complying taxpayer. Then somebody spoke about the process of obtaining withholding tax refund. <clears throat> Going through the rigorous of tax audits, and of course, the refund have been confirmed by FRS in writing that this amount is owned to ABC Limited. And this tax law specifically stated that this amount should be refunded within a period of 90 days. And what happened if the 90 days lapses and FRS are unable to fulfill the obligation? One, if FRS, uh, if any taxpayers fails to pay their taxes within the time stipulated under the law, FRS will charge not only the interest, but they will penalize. The law is inconclusive. If the taxpayer cannot have the benefits that they can charge FRS and interest, which is at the ruling rate of CBA's uh, rediscounting rate. Because if this is done, and if this one is enshrined in the act, it will put FRS on their toe that when an amount is confirmed payable as a refund to a taxpayer, such should be done within the time stipulated by the act. I've seen cases we are F, it will take FRS two good years to make a refund that is expected to be made within 30 days. <clears throat> I mean, within 90 days. The regulation states that the rate of withholding tax, and another thing is, there are some taxpayers that will continue to be in a refund position because the FRS are not actually taking their time to study the industry in which they belong. Most of the time, the flat, I mean, the, the withholding tax rate is 10, I mean, 5% or 10%. But you find out that there are some, uh, there are some industries, those profit margin is less than 15%. Now imagine FRS taking 5% from that. <clears throat> what would be? the effect of such on the liquidity of such organization. And of course, FRS will go ahead to say, such tax withheld cannot be used to offset back here. What a, what a law. Then the restriction placed by FRS in the period of utilization of credit notes has actually been uh, talked at, and then I think, um, we will expect more from people who will query that to say, why should I not be able to use my money the way I want? Then that is as far as FRS is concerned. For the state, I want the states to borrow a leave from FRS. At least, Mr. Bungemini says something that gladdens my heart, that a taxpayer should not be punished for the fact that an agent that deducted a tax has not remitted 
to the principal, that is the state. And of course, the representative of Lagos State's Board of Internal Revenue says something that the money that the agent deducted, if it has not been received by the government, they cannot actually grant either a credit or the taxpayer cannot enjoy any benefits. The FRS stated that if the taxpayer can prove that the deduction has been made on their behalf, if they apply for TCC, they will not be denied TCC. What will the states do in this respect? Number one, these are the challenges that are being faced by taxpayers when it comes to state internal revenue services. It's not limited to Lagos State alone. The state internal revenue services collects withholding tax through its agent and issue relevant receipts in the name of the firm or company. And these companies are not limited liability companies. They are not different from the owner. And it is left for the owner of the firm to prove to, the, to be the actual beneficiary of the tax deducted from the company before the withholding tax credit can be converted in his name. The taxpayers' challenges. When taxpayers apply to the state internal revenue for conversion of credit notes to the name of the owner of the firm or company, it takes a longer time for conversion to be made. The taxpayer has to spend more time and incur cost to follow up on the process with the Alpha Beta Consulting. I still wonder why the state internal revenue cannot do this thing themselves. Consultant to Lagos State Internal Revenue before the job will be done. Even when the conversion is completed, another application needed to be made before the value of the credit note will be credited to the ETCC card of such taxpayer. The taxpayer's expectation. The principal order of the uh, enterprise or business name has applied for conversion of the utility tax credit note. The value of the credit note should be updated to his or her ETC record instead of reapplying for that purpose again. It takes just wasting the taxpayer's time. Then number two, the utilization of the credit to know the tax credit note. The revenue expect the taxpayer to process the credit note and officially present them again before credit can be granted to the beneficiary. And these are the challenges faced by the taxpayer. The productive time is lost. The cost incur on an avoidable loss if only the revenue will grant credits to the beneficiary of the converted with the tax credit note without having to do series of applications to the same office and follow up with them at every stage. And we expect that once the taxable person has applied to the conversion, the conversion is expected to be done. The alphabet are limited and should be credited to the record of the taxpayer immediately. Then we have um, the inability to utilize the utility tax credit you know, due to inability to produce the physical. The same thing as it applies to FRS also is applicable to all the states board of internal revenue. And the taxpayer's expectation is that once this credit position of the taxpayer has been confirmed, the tax records should be updated. We are in an IT world, and these things, we, are, we, we don't expect that they should take more of our time and going forth and backward. The acceptance of ETCC updates with withholding tax payments. Most times, the states will not actually accept withholding tax, which is a tax paid in advance by a taxpayer to be uploaded and to be used to update the ETCC for individuals. The reason why I don't know, because what they clamor for is a fresh payment of cash. We've had the experience, except things have changed now, which is not to our knowledge, at least we experienced this similar thing about a week ago, I mean, about two, three weeks ago, when a taxpayer that has the challenge <clears throat> of inadequacy of what he or she has paid as taxes as presented by the tax credit certificate. Then the taxpayer realized that, oh, he has an amount which he has not collected 
from a customer amounting to almost 2 million naira. The taxpayer presented the credit notes. And it was shocking that the state's internal revenue denied the recognition of such credit notes, claiming that that amount has been spent by the state and the taxpayer was pay a fresh cash for the approval that the taxpayer sought to be given. I thank you all for listening and we hope that our tax authorities, both the federal and the states, will sit up and make the taxpayer the king that they should be. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Atumba, for this presentation. It's a detailed presentation, and you are taking time to look at uh, the challenges that taxpayers are being confronted with on a daily basis in an attempt to utilize their credit withholding tax credit notes. I want to thank you once again for the presentation. While your presentation is going on, we've received lots of questions from our participants showing that this very topic is affecting a lot of our participants and they want an immediate solution to these challenges. We will open up the floor for discussion. We are going to be looking at the questions that the participants have put forward. And then let's call on our facilitators to please profile some solutions to these identified questions. I'm going to start with some of the questions that we have received earlier on, and then it will be channeled to each of the participants from each of the facilitators uh, so that they can give us their perspective from their own perspective. They can give us answers or a guide on how to resolve these questions. I have a question that came from Mr. Abdurazak Bushari, who asks, where does the withholding uh, tax credit from dividend of an individual shareholder goes? So his question is, where should that withholding tax go to? Is the shareholder entitled to a withholding tax credit note? And if so, from whom? And I think this question will be best answered by our paper presenter, Mr. Oguni, if he's still on the platform. I know that some of our facilitators are busy with some day-to-day -day office work. So we're going to make sure that we won't take more than 30 minutes in this Q&A section so that they will be able to return to other assignments that uh, they have for the day. So Mr. Oguni, please, if you are still on the platform, can you assist us with some of these questions? My ICT team will enable you to make your presentation now. And why he is coming on board, I will equally want to ask, uh, request uh, Mrs. Uh, Babalo, Mrs. Akintola to please uh, come in and uh, profile some solution to these questions. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So I'll Thank just you. I'll start with the last question. Where the um, the the person asked, how would the taxpayer who is resident in Ogun State utilize a withholding tax credit note um, that was issued um, from transactions done in Lagos State? I think this one is um, very straightforward. Tax is about residency. If you come to execute contracts in Lagos State or Abia State or wherever, 
they know you are a resident of Ogun State. When they withhold your um, withholding tax, it will be remitted to your state of residence. And then you collect your tax credit note and you utilize um, as appropriate. So that is the answer for that. The other question was, um, it's been observed that most banks do not issue withholding tax credit notes apart from receipts in Lagos for state withholding tax after collection. Please throw more light on this. So basically, um, like I try to describe in the story of Mr. Chuka, when you work for a company, the company also has other people working for them. So they deduct from many people. Let's say they deduct just for ease of reference. You work for a company and they deduct, maybe they deducted 1 million from your, your payment and also from nine other people. So they've deducted 10 million as withholding tax, but this 10 million is from 10 different people. But they go to the bank and they pay the 10 million in. So the bank will give them the result, the receipt for 10 million. But you know, the, the remitter will now come to the tax authority with the schedule. And the schedule now has to have all the 10 names with the 10 taxpayer IDs. There's a prescribed format for this, um, the way it should be presented. Then we will now process using your taxpayer ID, posting the, the um, withholding tax deducted and remitted to your own individual um, tax account. And then we'll now issue the withholding tax, the credit note for each of the 10 people on that schedule and forward same to the, to the agent, to the, our own collection agent, which is the remitter, the person that deducted. So that is how that works. So even though the bank will give a, a, a global receipt, it is the tax authority's role to now give, step it down to each taxpayer through their taxpayer ID. Obviously, like I said, the challenge is like some of the names on the schedule may not have taxpayer ID, meaning that we will not be able to sort of process the tax credit note for those ones. So that is how um, it works. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. For us to be able to manage our time, uh, the facilitators and the paper presenters have some of the questions that we have sent to them to help us attend to. I want to call on Mr. Gabriel to kindly assist us to attend, uh, to, attend to some of the questions that we have uh, given to him to look at. Uh, one of the questions says that we need us to throw more light on withholding tax credit note applicability to taxpayers with 25 million turnover and below as the Finance Act gave exemptions conditionally, that is, on prompt filing of tax returns. While you're taking that also, I'm also going to look at other questions that relate to federal airline revenue service and request your kind assistance to attend to these questions for us. My ICT team has also enabled you to unmute yourself so that you can make your presentation, sir. Hello, sir. You can unmute yourself now and you can have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, sir. The, the question relating to the withholding tax on small companies, whether it's applicable or not, the main challenge in this one is that uh, how will the contractee knows that the company is having a, a withholding tax, I mean, a turnover of less than 25 million? Okay. And I don't think that any company will be applying for contract and will be quoting its turnover to any contract, to any contract, to, to any contractee. How would they know? So you are going to have a lot of EUs as really the administration of this kind of a thing. 
if every company will become less than 20, 25 million turnover when they apply for contracts. So that's the area that we have a challenge there. Yes, the law says that they are exempted, they are income exempted from tax, but at the point of administering a withholding tax, how will it be administered? So that's a question for the taxpayer to let us know. Um, then the other one. Thank you very much, sir. So in the same vein, yes, sir. Can I use with only that kind of 2017 to offset a German income tax liability of 2013? One thing I want us to note is that credit notes is a catch, as rightly said by Mr. Gibola. But first of all, it must be applied to the year that it relates, the, the income to which from where the credit notes uh, arises relates. So when you take it to that year, if there's a refund in that year account, then refund will be granted. And in the process of refund, you have as set out in the uh, segment at section 23, audit must be uh, carried out to that for FI to confirm the eligibility of the taxpayer to that refund. And once that is done, 30, 90 days after, the taxpayer has the right to use the uh, confirmed refund SS payment to offset any tax liability. If the law does not say they say just offset the tax liability. You have the option to use to, have, to offset tax liability. But for you to just say, I want to offset it on unilaterally, something that has not been confirmed, yeah, I don't, the law will not support that. And but when you are saying the, you know, that does not mean that you will be asked to go and pay your cash when you have credit first. You submit it, it is booked there. Then you can now, the TCC will be given to you where you are doing other things. Somebody also raised to you that uh, TCC, um, what, I, what I said is not being practiced in FRS. My challenge that I have with most of taxpayers is that most taxpayers also are not conversant with the provisions of the tax laws. Sorry to use that word. Section 101, paragraph 7, has been in the law from time immemorial. And if you are in any taxpayer or any tax office and someone said that you have, you have claimed, you have proved that you have a, um, a sole deduction, the person is saying cannot allow you, point the law to the person and if not, we report the person to the next authority, to the next to the superior, so that we can deal with it, you know, uh, the way it should be done. If this thing are handled professionally, we will not have much problem we are having today. But taxpayers at a certain time too, they have their own side of the case. So if you do deal with things according to the law, if the officers in charge of that office is not responding to it, and you have proof to him, report to the next office, uh, to the next, to his superior, and that will be taken off from there. So that's what I need to say about that. Another questions I have, or you want to be ready to me so that I can be very fast, because I have another meeting to attend to now. Sorry. Yes, sir, that's why I want you to attend to all those questions, I think, oh. you, sir. Okay, how about the migration of old credit notes automatically? You know, the credit notes migration, there are some times in our web portal, we, we were using the uh, web portal to determine the turnover of, of taxpayers. And when we did that, some taxpayers came forward to say that they, do, they are not the owner of the credits that were credited to their accounts. And it happens also because are, it's not error proof. So that is why the confirmation is necessary before we can migrate. So also the issue of giving automatic credit then is because we wanted to be sure that you have the authentic document for the, for the transaction before we can grant it. We have, you know, we know what app operating in the system where, where you give contract to, you collect contracts from a company or, or an agency. And it will, there are some kind of what, to, what happened in the, in the industry. I mean, Nigeria generally. And you have to withhold tax or something that is not even your own, and they will, the thing will be given to you because you have, there's a lot of markup or what do you call it, uh, padded. You know, there, those things happen in the practice. We all know that. And everybody, we cannot run away from that. If you are sure of it, come up with it, then you will get the credit. But now, the way we are even doing it in the, uh, in the task room mass now is that the moment the credit is given, we give you is your account. But when we go for audit, we will verify everything. And if there's any agency, you can't say that you don't know it, you don't have the, you don't know, the, uh, you are not the owner of the income if you have taken the benefit of the credit. So we are coming, at least with an approach we can adopt professionally and get this done, resolved, and be done the, the best way we can. Uh, the next one, sorry, uh, should there be any synergy between FRS 
so that tax and excess, so that they are not so far in upsetting their tax liability when wrong payment. If wrong payment has been made, just proof it. At least your TCC will not be will not be denied. But we cannot give credit automatically until that is sorted out between the two uh, bodies, SIRS and state and uh, federal and revenue service. Because even with the different type of taxes, some want to pay VAT, you pay you wrongly pay to education tax. It cannot be you will not be credited until the thing is resolved. And we do write letter to account general in most cases to do the to use to, to, to use the word call it journal entry to correct so that it can make because the way this money is shared is different. The percentage of sharing is different. VAT is shared at different rate, different from federation account. But tax payers need not to be suffer for all those things. That is why we say for, to enable you to continue your business, once those ones can be proved, we give you TCC while we are resolving the, those other ones behind the behind the scene. And as soon as they are resolved, your account will be credited and you get your right uh, credit in your account. Um, this one says what I'm saying is totally different from what is happening in the field. Yes, I know some of the offices will not do it, but if you prove to them this is the provision of the law, and I've said that not before, if they refuse, report to the net to the superior. The superior should be able to see better and guide according to the provision of the law because there's no reason why FRS should not comply with the law that they are enforcing. If we are to enforce the law, we should also comply with that law. So and that's what I can say about that. And any taxpayer also that has not, with, that we tell that has not remitted, the taxpayers, the vendor should have the courage to report such taxpayer to FRS by supplying information that this I have done for this and these are the proofs. It has not remitted my money. So FRS will not take it off from there. The, the agent of collection who has not remitted will be denied his TCC and there will be followed, there will be investigation on his, on his transactions. But when those information are not made available to FRS, then there's nothing we can do. Thank you. Then another one, I want to know whether a company in Nigeria can withhold from foreign, withholding tax from foreign supplier for either product or services with contract or without contract that has no representation at all in Nigeria. If a contract has no representation in Nigeria and it not, is not uh, qualified for tax under section 32 A to F now, A to E now of uh, CETA, that income, if it's not liable to tax in Nigeria, you can't withhold tax. It is only passive income that will be charged to tax, whether the person has a physical base or not, because it's passive. That one, and the paper presenter mentioned them, the interest, the dividend, the royalty, the rent or royalty, uh, and what else? An interest. So those ones, you don't need to have representation in Nigeria. Physical presence is not necessary. You'll be charged to tax. Then we have a signal economy presence now, digital income. And that one say that the moment you have your turnover above 25 million turnover, such will be withheld and remitted. For, for, but for uh, uh, consultancy, um, managerial, technical fees, and others, the withhold tax is going to be the final tax for non resident So Nigerian can withhold tax, where such income is liable to tax in Nigeria from a non resident uh, there is need for the relevant tax law to be reviewed, providing that with only tax on transaction with non-resident company be done by a local company and remit same to the tax authority, just as it is done in VAT. No, in, 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 you are the one that you consume the, you are the one that you have the obligation to make payments. It's Nigerian company that's obligated to make payment to a foreign company for services rendered to it. And that is why with only tax you will be told. The foreign company cannot withhold tax and remit to us because they don't have, they are not under their tax jurisdiction. That's, they are not the ones that even make remittances to us. But if a Nigerian company renders services to a company offshore, the, that is offshore, if offshore company is not under our tax law, so it do, it's not under obligation to withhold tax and remit to us. It's only the one that is Nigeria that can do so. So that's the one I have here to date. And uh, Mr. Abdibola made mention about uh, the, uh, as regard our refund system, you should also remember that our notes that our refund is based on funding. If we have funding that are not adequate, there's no way we can make the money available. Now we amended uh, Section 23 by uh, 2020 Finance Act to now make provision for refund uh, fund for each tax type. Before 2020, we were having, we were having funding for only from federal account, which we use to meet refund for VAT, for education tax, for NITDA, for CITA, even for PPT, where it happens. 
But in 2023, we were able, and the law was able, we, the, the, the National Assembly team meet to amend the law to make it now to be fund we provided from each tax type to meet um, refund for that type of tax. But that does not mean that we have all the money in the world to do so, because it's still going to be subject to the, the budget approved by the National Assembly. So in that case, we need to ration whatever we are having. So that's what we can say about it. I pray if the taxpayer can also help us make representation of the National Assembly to give us more money that we can meet all the refunds, that would be a very good one for us. Thank you very much. If there are any other questions, I'm sorry. I need to go to other meeting now. If I'm permitted, I will be gladly uh, happy if I'm released to go. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much, sir. We sincerely appreciate your presence and your contribution to this uh, discussion today. And your discussion, your contribution has also shed more light on the effort being made by the regulatory authorities at FIRS to lighten the challenges that we are being, we are the taxpayers are being confronted in an effort to utilize their withholding tax credit. We want to appreciate Mr. Gabriel once again. We also have other questions on the platform. And I'm going to be calling on our sub dean, uh, Otumba Ajibola, to call, uh, Ajibola to attend to some of those questions that we have been able to uh, draw his attention to. We are doing this in order to buy time for some of our facilitators who are also engaged. So please, sir, can you help us attend to the questions that are on your platform, sir? <clears throat> Yeah, <clears throat> thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Fidelis. Yes, somebody requested uh, that uh, a reputable company will take taxes from them, but fail to remit. And then what can the company do? The best thing to do is to report uh, such company to the relevant tax authority, could it may be the state of the federal, because you don't have uh, the machinery to compel such customer to pay or to remit to FRS. So the FRS has to do their job because if you don't do that, the taxes that are being returned, you will lose it because since the, your company is the beneficiary. So if you want to take the benefit of it, you have to compel such company and then to face FRS, the relevant tax authority, could it be FRS or the state? That's number one. Uh, the second one is uh, Mr. Olale Consaid, uh, yeah, it is a very funny issue uh, that some landlords who are expected to pay taxes on rent argue that they prefer to make direct payment instead of being subjected to withholding tax deduction. <clears throat> the, I think the enforcement of that is quite cumbersome by the, uh, by the state uh, board of internal revenue nationwide. I don't know, even in the rural area, because the law does not discriminate. It says, on rent, that should be withholding tax. I, I wonder how many uh, tenants will want to hold withhold tax, I mean, income that is due to their landlord. The fact is, you won't get that house either in Lagos, except when you are dealing with a corporate organization. But for individual landlords, they will not allow you to withhold. Even that is what the law says that they have to you have to be told and pay. But the state has not been able to do anything in, re in relation to that. Um, Bashar Rahman, there is a need for the relevant uh, tax law to be reviewed, providing that we told the tax on transaction with NRC, which one is NRC be done by the local company, and remain same to the tax authority as is done with. I don't know what uh, the <clears throat> the participant mean by NROC. Uh, let me now attend to uh, Dr. Gossin. Great presentation. Throw more light on the tax applicability to taxpayer with 25 million turnover and below. As has been said earlier by Mr. Obidja Milusi, there is no way that a contractee will know from the onset that um, the turnover is below 25 million. But what can be done is 
for organize, for companies that uh, their turnover is not more than 25 million, at the end of your financial year, you make an application to FRS for such amount to be refunded to you. You can get a refund from FR, FRS once your threshold is below 25 million. It's automatic. That won't be an issue of tax error audit being conducted on the organization since they are actually exempted from paying tax. I think that's it. Thank you very much, sir. I also want to bring on uh, Mrs. Uh, Akintola to attend to two more questions. And after she must have done that, we would like to have her closing thoughts on how to mitigate these challenges. Um, um, a question that just um, came in says, shouldn't there be synergy between FIRS and SIRS so that taxpayers will not have to suffer in upsetting their tax liabilities when wrong payment is made to either of the two um, agencies? Yeah, um, there is a synergy, but it's not so um, sort of seamless. So like we, in the example that I discussed earlier in my paper presentation, where a director's fees um, um, is paid erroneously or wrongly to FIRS instead of the state, then, and they want to use it, you know, they want the credit notes, then they have to do a letter. It's not, it's not so easy like um, that you just switch it like that because obviously there's so many things to do with accounting, so many. So a letter has to be initiated, written, requesting for this um, to be done. And that letter will be escalated. We normally resolve it through JTB because sometimes we have some of the federal's money wrongly paid to or some of the state's money wrongly paid to federal and we just try to net. So uh, it's, not a, um, it's not a quick resolution, but it's, if you really want it and you follow through, it will be done. We've done several. It's just that it is not so easy. It is not um, without paperwork. Um, thank you. And um, I'll pick another question. Yes, there is a question on yeah. companies that are in the leasing business subjected to 10% withholding tax and they end up paying more withholding tax than their income tax liability. And in the process, they pile up on used tax credit notes. How can such companies get refunds for their credit notes? Um, because that would not um, happen at the state level, because I think that would be for FIRS. But it shouldn't, if they are filing every year and they're doing the correctives, it shouldn't pile up anyway. So for, at the state level, this, this cannot happen. So I, I don't want to, you know, so, I, because if they're Thank listening- Thank you very business, much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So um, you, very much, you, said do, yeah, you said I should do a short so, recap of what I've learned today. Yes, let's have your closing we, talks, Mark. Yeah. Well, what, um, from listening to all the different paper presentations today and even the answers to the questions, um, I think I want to appreciate the, the organizers, especially in view of the, the FIRS circular that went out in 2018, I think this has really sort of brought a lot of um, attention to withholding tax credit notes and a lot of agitations and people sort of need more clarifications. But I think the papers have said it all, um, the treatment of withholding tax credit notes, the processing is all about knowing how to go about it. So I think maybe enlightenment and using consultants companies should try and use consultants more than know these processes. So if you're trying to do it by yourself and you don't know how to go about it, then it looks difficult. But if you go to the right people, the right consultants that know the process, that do it every day, then it is, it is um, straightforward. We still have issues with the technologies 
and with the implementation of new platforms to just to make it easy. But all these things will become easier and easier as um, the state's revenue agencies and the federal revenue agencies are investing more and more in technology. Obviously, we appreciate um, from Chief Ajibola that time is of the essence in all these things. A lot of the, the credit notes will be issued and eventually utilized, but we want it to be done speedily. So obviously automation will help with the time frame. And um, basically like out, I've learned a lot, I've listened and I, I, mean, I have a lot of take back to the agency as well to see where we can improve. And I, I know that if small companies, big companies may be able to employ you know, accountants and everything, but medium and small companies, I would advise to use um, consultants, tax consultants to help them process this thing. If, if we tell your taxes, then you need to utilize them. You know, their, their credits and they're supposed to reduce your liabilities by said amount. So, but if you are not sure how to go about it, you can approach the state agency, but just to make life easier, just approach uh, uh, a registered tax consultant registered with CITN. And I don't, I think we can overcome all these things and then um, hopefully technology in the near future will make all this a thing of the past. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma. It's been a pleasure having you here and for your thoughts and your presentation. And I can conclude comfortably well that uh, Mrs. Uh, can I, can I, yes, Mrs. Akintola, she has made it clear that if as a taxpayer, you cannot or you don't understand how to resolve any of your tax issues with the tax authorities, please seek the assistance of tax consultants. And then I believe that we have a lot of our members who are consultants on this platform today. It means you have to also put in more efforts to understand the tax landscape and the challenges and what effort can be made to resolve these challenges in order to be able to assist your clients and other taxpayers to resolve these issues in a way that will benefit the system, both the taxpayer and the tax system, the, the tax uh, system altogether. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for your thoughts now. I will equally want to call in the sub dean, uh, Otumba, uh, to also give us his final thoughts on this platform today. Otumba san Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Fidelis, for a thank wonderful you. session. Um, quickly, let me just um, answer the person who requested for, for clarification on withholding tax uh, deductible on leasing. One, there are two types of leasing that we have. We have operating lease and we have finance lease. Uh, on finance lease, it presupposes that the leasee is the owner, while on the operating lease, the leaser is the owner. The withholding tax is only deductible on operating lease, not on finance lease. So they have to be careful and they have to get a good tax consultant to be able to differentiate on what type of leases should they suffer with the tax on? So, practically, hello? Yes, sir, we're with you, sir. We're very much with you, sir. Hello? Yes, sir, go ahead, sir, we're very much with you. So, so, so practically, they shouldn't be... Yeah, practically, they shouldn't be having... Yeah, practically they shouldn't be having too much withholding tax that their income or their tax payable cannot absorb. And then finally, in conclusion, uh, I want taxpayers to fight for their rights because there are certain provision of the law that actually gives them certain rights, but taxpayer doesn't seem to be exploiting that. I mean, uh, like what Mr. Ogujeli Milusi said in regards to with regards to refund. Of course, 
taxpayers are not bothered. They shouldn't be they shouldn't be bothered about inadequacy of funds. Do they listen to taxpayers when taxpayer doesn't have enough fund to pay their tax liability? The answer is no. They still will go ahead to charge them interest and penalty. Once the law prescribed that, look, after the acknowledging acknowledgement of the amount that is refundable to a taxpayer, and they are not able to meet that target within a period of 90 days, the taxpayer should be compensated for the use of their fund. Their fund, those funds are their working capital. So it's unacceptable to the taxpayers to be cheated. And until the tax, pay, the tax law is balanced, you know, there's a general saying in the tax, I mean, in law, that he who seeks equity must come with clean hand. If the tax authorities want the taxpayers to be honest with them, they should equally be honest with the taxpayers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We want to appreciate you sincerely for these, your thoughts and for your contribution. Uh, for my dear participants, we still have some questions and I think uh, you can still send me your questions if we have not attempted to any of the questions. But I think uh, we, we've been able to attend to all the questions that I can see so far. If there are still any other questions, please do send them in. We will try and harvest the opinions of our paper presenters and we will share them with all the participants through via your email. I've equally received requests that um, the presentation should be shared with the participants. Be rest assured that this will be done. We're going to share the presentation, both that of the lead paper and the thoughts of the panelists with all our participants today. So on this note, I want to appreciate each and every one of us for making our time to be on this call this afternoon. I would like to invite the coordinating dean of our faculties in the CITN. The coordinating dean is coordinating all the faculties. We have five of the faculties. And this platform today being hosted by one of the faculties, our coordinating dean is in charge. So he's gonna give us a vote of thanks and then uh, we'll call it a day after this. The coordinating dean, Dr. Mark Abani, you will have the floor now. Kindly unmute yourself and let's have your vote of thanks. Okay, so I think you can now unmute yourself, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, they've unmuted you, so uh, good. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, moderator, for keeping us all together and on time. On behalf of the CITN, uh -huh. may I uh, extend our profound thanks to all the paper presenters. Um, they have been both erudite and even more so by the simplicity and clarity of the presentations and the identification of the issues. Uh, I particularly also would like to thank the representatives of the regulatory bodies, FIRS, uh, and the state boards of internal revenue represented by Lagos State Internal Revenue Services. Uh, all of the questions raised by participants, all of the additional issues uh, uh, presented, and uh, the questions and answers have all been illuminating. I'm happy that there's a general consensus that while uh, withholding tax is a very important part of revenue collection, uh, and the point has been made very clear, and I often have to make this myself to both taxpayers and regulatory bodies, it's not a tax in itself, it's merely a collection mechanism, somewhat like PAYE. So it needs to be done as easily as possible. Uh, and I think all of the pinch points have been elucidated. Some of them that require some possible lacuna in the legislation, we will see how we can make those matters available to the bodies that are responsible uh, for making some of those changes. But I, can't, I believe that the key issue is the correct 
interpretation and correct administration by both taxpayers and the tax authorities in order to make the rules that exist work optimally for everybody. I know as a former uh, inspector uh, of taxes in the UK and as a former board member of FIRS, that uh, very often as a regulator, you are approaching those who do not want to play rather than those who play. So you tend to treat everybody as non-compliant until they prove themselves to be compliant. But in the case of withholding tax, I think the point was eloquently made by some of our uh, contributors who said that the majority of the people who are within the withholding tax net and who are within the tax regime are actually the compliant taxpayers. And so we should make it as easy as possible for them to conclude their tax affairs in a manner that is fair, just, and reasonable, and does not cause them any double payment of taxes and therefore allow us to spend more effective time using compulsory deductions of withholding tax to identify taxpayers who should be in our net, who are not in our net, and who need to help pay tax. If we go back to the LAFA principle, the more that pay tax, the lower the tax rates can go for everybody. Uh, so on, on this note, I will draw everything to a close. I will place on record uh, the CITM's uh, gratitude to the tax policy and admin faculty for taking the steps to organize this webinar free of charge. And I will remind all uh, CITN members that you have two uh, points, uh, uh, CPD points, for having attended this free seminar. So I think everybody is a winner. Thank you very much and have a productive rest of the day and rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much, my coordinating dean. On the same note, I would equally want to say, request all our participants to please stand by immediately after the closing prayer. We are all going to recite the second stanza of the national anthem as our closing prayer. If you are in a good position uh, that we can take your future, then we will request that you on your, uh, your video, so that our ICT can take a snapshot of all the participants in today's webinar. That is if you feel you are in a, bit, a good position and then we'll be able to do that. I want to appreciate all our participants, our paper presenters, like my dean has also done that. Thank you for attend, uh, attending today's program. And we will be having many more of such coming up in the nearest future. Please do well to join us in other and our subsequent uh, webinars. My name is Abia Humeri Fidelis. I work with CITN and we appreciate each and every one of us for coming here today. Please, I want to invite each and every one of us, if you can unmute yourself and then let us take the second stanza. My IC2 will unmute everybody now so that we can take the second stanza of the national anthem as our closing prayer. And I think the second stanza of the national anthem is on our screen. Please, can we take it now? One, two, go. O oh God of curation, direct our noble cause. Guide thou our leaders right. Help our youth the truth to know. In love and honesty to grow and living just and true, Great lofty highs attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. And we say amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for participating in today's event. Please, if you wouldn't mind, let's just take a snapshot of our participation. So if you can on your video now, this is the time for you to on your video so that we can capture your presence. Thank you. That will just be for the next two minutes only. Only in the next two minutes, they will capture everybody that have their faces on this platform now. All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate each and every one of you for making out your time 
to be part of this program today. Do have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you and bye-bye.